Hey everybody, my name is Daniel Fusco, and welcome to Bite Size Bible, where we take a bite size of the Bible, and we look at what does it mean, and then we want to look at how does it apply to our life, because we want to be people of the book who know the Word, and not only know the Word intellectually, but we allow the Word of God to make that slow journey from our heads to our hearts, and then from our hearts out to our hands, down to our feet, so that we can walk this out every single day. So I'm really excited to get into it with you today. So we're going to be looking at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, with a message that I like to call the gift of hope. Now, Timothy was one of Paul's young men, his young protégés, and, and, God, and God was using Paul to kind of mentor and disciple Timothy. And Timothy was starting to kind of crumble under the weight of the, of the ministry. He was really struggling. And Paul says one verse to him that is full of meaning. Listen to what it is. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, what we learn first is that we need to replace fear. Why? Because God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Fear is the normal human reaction that we have to uncertain circumstances. Everybody experiences fear. But for the child of God, for the person who believes in the Lord, we want to replace fear. And we replace fear with faith. Really, because what we're saying is because God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. So God doesn't want us to be people who walk in fear. He wants us to be people who trust him and walk victoriously in faith. So the very first step in the, when God gives us the gift of hope is we need to replace that fear with faith. Now, there's a question that's going to come up on your, on your screen right now. And I want you to be able to spend some time really thinking about this. So don't run by this. Spend some time. Seek the Lord about it. Maybe write in your journal a little bit about it so we can really make sure that we're dealing with the fear in our life. Go ahead. I'll be right back with you. What are the things you're most afraid of right now? How is God inviting you to replace your fear? What are you replacing your fear with? So we see that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but then it says, but of power. And I would say to you this way, I got the power. I hope you know that song. I hope when you when I said that you heard, I got the power. It's a great song by Snap 1990, one of my the anthems of my youth. But listen, God has given us the gift of power. And that power, of course, is the Holy Spirit. Why? Because God doesn't just expect us to live transformed lives unique lives. He empowers us to do it. And for each one of us, we always have to remember that if you are in Christ, you have already received the power of the Holy Spirit. And what I love so much, and Paul talks about it at the end of 2 Corinthians, about how in our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. So when we feel weak, that's when God's power really moves because at the end of ourselves begins the power of God. And so God has given us the gift of unique power in his spirit already. And the gift of hope comes as the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, there's a question that's going to be coming up on your screen. I want you to really spend some time with it. Really think through it. Journal about it. Pray about it. And then we'll get back together in just one moment. Go ahead. How are you seeing your own weaknesses at this present time? And how can you rely on the Spirit's power in the ways you feel weak right now? So God hasn't not given us only a a spirit of fear, but he's given us his power. And then it says, and of love. Now I love this because in Christ, the gift of hope, we always need to let love rule. We need to let love rule because over and over and over again in the scripture, it's all about love. The greatest of these, it's love. That's what the apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And really what we learn is that God has proactively loved each one of us. And because God has loved us, then we respond to God's love with love, 
right? We love him because he first loved us. And then we begin to move into the world loving other people. And so the gift that God gives us is not a spirit of fear, but he's given us the power of the Holy Spirit. And of course, the fruit of the Spirit is what? Is love. And so we always need to make sure that what does the highest love ask of me? What would God want me to do if I was walking as a vehicle of pure love, experiencing his love, and then letting it flow through my life? So we always want to let love rule. Now, again, there's this question for us to think through, to ponder on, to really to really ruminate on. And so take some time. Let's go through that question, and I'll be back with you in just one moment. Are you letting love rule your life, or is something else ruling your life? What does love require of you right now? So we've already seen that we need to replace fear because God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. He's given us power. We got the power. Love. We're going to let love rule. And then it says, and a sound mind. And I always like to say it this way. You and I, we need to keep our heads. You need to keep your head. Why? Because oftentimes in times of uncertainty, we kind of lose our minds. It gets big in our head. We get all worked up and we kind of begin to spaz out. We're unable to keep our heads And when we do that, then it limits our ability to be able to be salt and light in our community, in our world. I always think of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, where it says we should not be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, God doesn't want us to be shaped by the world. He wants us to be transformed. And part of that transformation comes with the renewing of our mind. It changes and renews our mind in such a way that we begin to live in such a way that proves what is God's good and acceptable and perfect will. So you and I, we got to make sure we keep our heads. Not always the easiest thing to do, but when we got the power and we let love rule, it actually happens pretty effortlessly. Now, another question for you. Don't skip over this. Let's make sure that we really get down deep into what this means for us. Go ahead. I'll be right back with you. Where are you struggling to think with your renewed mind? How can you renew your mind right now? How can you keep your head in God's word this week? So we've seen this amazing text where it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But we have to remember that you and I, we need to receive God's gifts because it says, 2 Timothy chapter 1, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the power of the love and the sound. So all of this comes as a gift. And you and I, we need to receive God's gift. And the gift of hope that God wants to give us comes in the person and work of Jesus. Because when a person puts their faith and trust in Jesus, then they receive the power of the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit indwells us. And in Christ, we realize that we are acceptable and beloved. And when we are in Christ, then we are no longer being conformed to this world, but we were being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And now all of a sudden we have that sound mind. And so you and I need to make sure we have received the gift That is Jesus, salvation in God's name. God loves us and he has amazing gifts for us and that gift is Jesus himself. Now, there's one more question that I want you to be able to look at. So listen, take a moment and check out that question. I'll be right back with you. Reflect on your life right now. What gifts of God do you need to walk in? How are you choosing to receive God's gift of hope today? I don't know about you, but this is a powerful, powerful scripture, right? And we really want to make sure that we are walking out in the reality of the gifts that God has given us, Jesus, not fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So thanks for joining me. I can't wait to see you soon.